Hello, and welcome to the Hip Vault Show, where we discuss all things HIPAA compliance and the cloud. My name is Adam, and I'm joined as always by the CTO and founder of Hip Vault, Gil Vidal's. Hey, Adam. Welcome to Friday, and welcome to the podcast. Happy Friday. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to diving into it with you. So our subject and topic that we're going to cover today is strategies for enhancing WooCommerce security and compliance. Uh, so we're going to dive in a little bit deeper. We've done a couple of shows on WooCommerce um, at a higher level, uh, but yeah, looking forward to diving into WooCommerce a bit more today with you all. But before we get started with that, we have our regular segment, the breach of the week. And today the breach of the week is R1CM data breach impacts mm. 16,000 patients. Uh, R1C, uh, RCM, RCM stands for um, Revenue Cycle Management. It's a well-known system within healthcare on basically how they bring in the, the, the patient's uh, requests and process uh, payments for, for patients. It's called revenue cycle management. And R1 systems, R1 RCM Inc's uh, system reported a breach of PHI of 16,121 individuals. So Gil, we're, you know, 16,000 individuals. What are we, to, what are we multiplying that by in terms of dollars? <laughs> uh, I to, think we multiply that by, I think five and then by two. We've explained five. that in other videos before. Why, why five dollars and why by two? Now, at a, at a, just a cursory level, because this boils down to this organization. In this case, Dignity's Dignity Health will have to pay for um, an identity monitoring service, like from Equifax or one of those big companies, and that's part of breach resolution so and we say well what are those costs well, yeah they've offered they've offered two years of complimentary credit monitoring and identity now, when they say complimentary obviously yeah the so dignity health buys it wholesale from a like what equifax they say we need sixteen thousand uh, identity monitoring subscriptions and we need it for two years so then instead of paying like if you go to equifax you pay you know 24 dollars as a single user as a single user, you know, but if you're buying 16,000 at a time, you get the price down to four or five. So know, 16,000 times $10. Right. Okay. So that would be $160,000. But then that's just for the credit monitoring and identity theft protection right. services. Then you got to look yeah. at potential fines. Yeah. Well, there's pen testing that they'll have to do uh, the potential fines absolutely from the uh, what is it? The Office of Civil Rights, OCR. Yeah, you, which is a, for those you're talking anywhere between a hundred per a hundred dollars uh, mm -hmm. per violation, all the way up to fifty thousand. Yeah, per violation. So yeah, right. That's doesn't. Vary. So these things escalate very, very quickly to becoming a multi-million dollar affair. Yeah, and in terms and of the source of the breach, unauthorized access by a third party. That's that's all we know, and it's right. Uh, yeah, than that, it says not due to the hospital network being compromised. Mm. Mm. So they're telling us it wasn't. What they're telling us here is like, look, it wasn't some brilliant hacker that came in from the outside. But what does what, if we read between the lines? That could mean that an employee, for example, a disgruntled employee, could have taken data from within the network, or a because, contractor. Or a contractor, yeah. Yeah. So we, we don't know. I mean, they didn't say that, but you have to start reading between the lines and go, well, if it wasn't from the outside through the network, then maybe it was from the inside. Yeah. Uh, anyway, these these things are always uh, quite alarming, of course, for the company. Now, Dignity Health is a huge health network, and they have teams of lawyers, and they have probably a lot of insurance. So it's still a very um, intense event for them but they do have the deep pockets if you're a smaller company though you don't have those deep pockets and that becomes a real challenge to get through that yeah and that brings us on to woocommerce really because woocommerce is used by smaller businesses to be able to sell products online and when it comes to healthcare you might have specific medical devices that you're selling uh, online and woocommerce can play a very good role but obviously mm -hmm. to avoid similar kind of 
hacks, you want to make sure that it's as secure as possible. So let's talk a little bit about what we can do to secure WooCommerce, Gil. Um, at, a, at, a, at a high level, what, what, are we, what are we looking at to make sure that well, yeah, I, again, we like we we always use that term at a high level because you know our audience isn't necessarily all technical, mm -hmm. and we don't we don't want to leave them out. So for everyone involved, whether you're technical, whether you're the owner, the, a key point to remember, and I, I know people cringe sometimes when they hear this, but security is not one and done. It's not something Rich. you can. Yeah, you can't buy. A package from somebody like magic and say oh look you know i hit this magic button and all my security is good forever it does it just doesn't work that way the reason it doesn't work that way is because the bad actors the attackers are always evolving they're always trying new ways to get in therefore the tools that are used and the knowledge that people have it has to also evolve along with the attacker so that's that's the reason why it's not just magic bullet one and done and so even companies that come to us and say, well, we have a healthcare application, we want to host it with HIPAA Well, they're one and done in the sense they're paying us, so they don't have to worry about it, but we're constantly working on it on our end. And they're paying us to do that. So that's that's really what it comes down to. So if you have the right mindset and you're not getting disgusted that, well, last, you know, last month we added this tool, and why do I have to do something else this month? I mean, you, you have to expect and have the right expectations, I think. Yeah, definitely. And because WooCommerce is essentially a plugin of WordPress, if you're listening, watching, and you haven't already checked out our WordPress specific videos, I'd encourage you to do so. Uh, because yeah, we, we go into a lot more details on WordPress as a whole, as a content management system, and what security needs to be in place for that in mm -hmm. uh, other videos. While you're at it, give us a like and subscribe. Um, so let's dive a little bit, a uh, little bit deeper, Gil. I can pull up, um, you know, the WordPress dashboard if if, if, if that's useful for a visual. Sure. Okay. Let's... Yeah, you were told me you found a plugin that's called uh, Kivicare. What what does Kivicare do? Kivicare is a clinic and patient management system built on WordPress, and hmm. it's the most simple self-hosted clinic and patient management solution based on the WordPress platform, which allows you to set up your online clinic instantly. Um, okay. It's also got mobile functionality, so you can have the Word, uh, a Kivicare plugin for WordPress and then do things for, like build a mobile app if you want. Um, and yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's quite popular. So I was just looking at it as an example of potentially, you know, if you're a healthcare provider and you want to add functionality, uh, let's say a portal or anything to your WordPress existing WordPress site, then you might mm -hmm. choose Kivica. You know, we're not sponsored by Kivica or anything, but I just thought it'd be a good example. So, well, what are right. we looking for when we're assessing whether a plugin's secure? Go. Uh, well, there's a couple of of telltale signs. So one is, you know, who who is the author of this thing? Now, when I say author, I don't, you know, you say, well, it was Joe Blow. Well, that doesn't help you determine if they're if they're a good programmer. But, you know, some of these are made by companies. So if you say, oh, this was written by a particular company, then that gives you more confidence than if it was written by some, you know, 12-year-old. So you you would you would want to see that it's supported by a group, you know, even if it's say two or three developers, that may not be a company, but it's two or three developers. So that's always good. You want to have you want to have some depth there. Uh, the other thing is you want to see what version it is. is. Are you the guinea pig? Are you testing this for them? Are you on, are they on version zero point one? So here 0. that would be at, at at the top on the screen, right? Here, version three point six point one. Yeah, yeah. And then you see that the author, um, Iconic. If you if you press on that, is that a company or what is the like? It is a company. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you went to Iconic. Yeah. Okay. So so th that kind of passed. Now remember, these are just cursory evaluations. This doesn't mean that it's super secure, but it starts to give you a sense for this tool. And right now I have a good sense for it. It's a mature product. It's been around for a while. It's made by a company. It's supported well. has a good rating. So we're off to a good start. We're off to a good start. That's important. Active installations. Yeah, they got a lot of installations, so they got a good user base. 
And of course, someone could read through the low stars to find out, you know, if there's some yeah, just like if you shop problem or something. Yeah, just like if you're on Amazon, you click on a couple of the lower stars, see if if it was just a, a customer raging about something of a no consequence, or if it's really truly something important. Um, the other thing you want to see, yeah, the change logs are good too. You want to see how often this is being updated. So this was updated last on in March. That was just a week ago. And then before that, it was uh, it was updated in February, yeah. and then before that, the year. So yeah, they're getting you know fairly regular updates. That's that's another good sign. It means they're actively working on it. Yeah. Uh, if you saw, on the other hand, that the last time they touched this was you know two years ago, yeah. Then you would start thinking, oh, it sounds like this project's been abandoned. Oh, and then also. What is it to say about the, you know, the WordPress version and the PHP version? I think that's a valid point. You want to see if it's compatible with some of the versions that you may have installed. You may be on a, a slightly older version of WordPress, but the main thing there is just to make sure that it's it's compatible with whatever WordPress version you're using. And you should have, be using a more current one, right? Right, right. So if you if you have an application and you look and say, wait a minute, I'm using version 5.2, and this one says it's compatible with 6.4, that means you can't use it. But also as a is a hint to yourself. You say, wait a minute, why am I on version 5.x? I should be on something much more current. You need to go talk to your tech team and say, hey guys, what's going on here? Why are we on this ancient version of WordPress? That's not good. That was Kivica. Was was there was there anything um, else uh, when it comes to the plugin specifically? Yeah, there is something else that we we need to talk about for a minute, and that is the paid version. So, well, you know, WordPress is available for free. Anyone can just use WordPress, but don't get sucked into the mindset of "Hey, I want it all for free" because you're running a business. There's a lot of liability here. Pay for the plugin for sure. In fact, in fact, if a plugin only has a free version, I would that would be one of my concerns. I I would tend not to go with the plugin that doesn't have a commercially supported version. Why is that? Well, because you're running a business and if you have a problem with that plugin, whether it's security related or functionality related, you want to be able to reach out and say, "Hey, I'm Dr. Smith. I'm a paid customer of yours. I need some help." And you want someone to respond on the other end. If it's yeah. free, there's a very, very high chance that when you email them, you'll never hear back. You know, they don't, there's no, there's no monetary incentive for them to do anything. Yeah. So very, very important that uh, you have a paid licensed plugin. Anything to say about the access controls with these plugins? Like who should have access to installing them, removing them? Well, a typical scenario is that you have a, an administrator who has the access to reach out to everything. And then from there, you have a different level. Maybe you have access just for your search engine optimization person that just has to do SEO. Or, and then you have another level of access for just, say, the person that's going to be uh, your editor that's going to be adding and removing pages. Mm-hmm. So the, the technique there that's best practices is only give the amount of access that's required for that person to do their job. You don't want to give them too much. You don't want to give the editor of your content access to add and remove users, for example. They don't they don't have any business doing that. So you shouldn't give them that access. And that's uh, usually there's levels of access and you can just just choose the right level for whoever you're adding to the back end of WordPress. That's the least least privilege, right? Least privilege is that that's what that philosophy or that protocol is called least privilege anything else that i I missed out this may fall out of out of the scope of this conversation but it's worth mentioning briefly that you want to have a scan of your site on a regular basis to find any vulnerabilities so hippa gauge uh and then full disclosure hippa vault created a plugin called hippa gauge and you can install that that's that's a tool that will just simply tell you whether or not your site has some vulnerabilities. That's a, it's a tool that gives, it's a really an indication. It's an indicator. So you can use that or you can pay. Yeah, there you go. Hippie gauge. You can also pay a scanning pen testing company that can do that. Now that can be expensive, but I mean, I'm just giving you the different options. So you can scan it for free. You can pay someone to scan it. 
but you should have somebody scanning your site on a regular basis, at least, you know, best practice every month. But if you can't afford that, you know, maybe every three months. All right, great. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you, Gil. And thank you, viewers and listeners for checking out the episode. Uh, please do like, uh, subscribe and share the content with anyone that you think might be interested. Until next time, thanks for stopping by.